Welcome to the Trill NBA Show. I'm your host, Felicia and Rose Anuha, aka the Trillist NBA you will ever know. And I'm here to help you survive and thrive in corporate America by giving you the truth and being as real as only I can be. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back to the show. This is season six. Oh my goodness. Season six. The year of And so the focus of this season is to really get you into the steps that you need to take to get promoted. And in the previous episodes, the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about the pie model for career success. And today we're gonna talk about the P, performance. But first, Corporate Warriors Spotlight. So listen, y'all, understand, I have these Corporate Warrior Spotlights planned out, but I had to switch it up today. Because I don't know about y'all, but this past week, watching the confirmation hearings of the Honorable Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, I had to make her my spotlight this week. Because when I tell you Katanji Onika Brown Jackson is the epitome of black girl resistance in the workplace, on the stage, we watched her stay composed, be dehumanized by these white people that have nothing on her, like nothing. Like they're literally making up things. And she had to sit there in her grace with the ancestors lifting her up because she will be the first black woman Supreme Court justice after 511 million years, y'all. But uh, let me bring it down. So I'm gonna tell you, if you don't know, let me read just her bio from Wikipedia, which I thought whoever wrote this, you did a great job. Katanji Anika Brown Jackson is an American attorney and jurist who has served as a federal judge on the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit since 2021. She is a current nominee for the Supreme Court awaiting confirmation in the Senate. And we are witnessing that shenanigan right now. Born in Washington, D.C. and raised in Miami, Florida, Jackson attended Harvard University for college and law school. So Harvard times two, y'all. That is no small feat. Where she served as an editor on the Harvard Law Review, which is a prestigious thing to do in law school, especially at Harvard. She began her legal career with three clerkships. Now, y'all, most people just have one. Homegirl had three, including one with the Supreme Court Associate Justice Stephen Breyer. Prior to her elevation to an appellate court from 2013 to 2021, she served as a district judge for the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. Jackson was also vice chair of the United States Sentencing Commission from 2010 to 2014. Since 2016, she has been a member of the Harvard Board of Overseers. So on February 25th, 2022, President Joe Biden nominated Jackson to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, filling the vacancy created by Breyer's retirement. If confirmed, Jackson would be the first Black woman to sit on the Supreme Court. Y'all, let me tell y'all. If you want to have a master class in how you need to perform, go watch the confirmation hearing of the Honorable Katanji Brown Jackson. She was grace under pressure. She was poised. She was prepared. She was everything. She is Black girl magic embodied and personified in color 
on all these screens. So go watch how she showed up and just the ways that even though she had her facial expressions, she still like, she kept it together because them motherfuckers need to be cussed out. Let's just be clear. If she had popped off, rolled her neck, it would have been warranted and deserved, especially that alien from Texas called Ted Cruz. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, today, I'm going to focus on the P in the pie model. And P stands for performance. in this first segment I want to talk about is the ironies of performance, right? So again, as we had been in the good book of empowering yourself, that's our text (laughs) that we're reading from, he talks about this, right? And the P in this model is performance. It's first, but it carries the least weight overall in the importance of getting a promotion. But if you think about it, it's first for a reason. Hey, Felicia, why is it first? <laughs> well, it's first because guess what? If you don't perform, you don't get in the door, right? Like base bare minimum, you have to have great performance. But today I'm going to discuss and I want to change your perspective on what exactly does great performance mean, right? See, here's the thing. There's performance and then there's what your manager thinks performance is. So you have to understand, you must be aware of not only your performance. So we do these self-evaluations of ourselves, right? And we're our own worst critic. Let's be honest about that. Especially as Black women. Like, we are hardest on ourselves. And I know it's some shit that, like, our parents taught us or we got it, you know, from how we're culturalized to like, you know, not make mistakes and be, you know, you got to work 10 times as hard. But I'm here to tell you, that's the thing, not necessarily. And I talked about that when I said, hey, do the least, right? Because it's really not about what you think you're doing, but it really is about what your manager and the organization And again, your manager is the mouthpiece here. So your manager speaks to and for the organization. So I don't want you to miss that. Your manager speaks to and for the organization. And we're going to break that down. So how can you raise your self-awareness around your performance? Well, let's hosey on over to the good book here. So in Empowering Yourself by Harvey J. Coleman, and the first chapter here about performance, he says, you should be aware that your performance cannot be accomplished in a vacuum. You need a plan, one agreed to by both your manager and you. Your idea of success and your managers may not be the same. This plan, once developed, forms the basis of your performance appraisal, an annual event in many organizations. Remember, as stated before, performance is the common denominator in the promotion process. If your performance is average or substandard, then your image and exposure no matter how positive, will not secure you a promotion. Achieving an outstanding performance appraisal is vital if you are to progress. Just let that sink in. So, I know the question is, but Felicia, you said that we should do the least. So how are we going to do the least and get an outstanding performance appraisal? That's what I'm going to talk about when we get back from the break. Stay tuned. (laughs) 
Hey guys, what's up? Felicia here. So, did y'all know I have a Patreon? Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you for all those people who have already signed up for the Patreon and who are contributing to keeping this show an active show and like with new episodes and produced and sound designed and all these great things because that costs money. And clearly, if you're hearing me right now instead of an advertisement from a brand, ah, do the math for yourself. Not making any money, y'all. Dropping gems for free. But not really, because you can support the show. Yes, you can. So I want you to head on over to patreon.com slash MBA show. The link will be in the show notes as well. And sign up. And in the month of April, if you sign up by March 31st, you will get an exclusive invitation to have a group session with me. Yes, I will be answering all your workplace questions. We're going to kick it. We're going to powwow. This will happen in April. There'll be several scheduled events because I know some of you across the pond, you know, it'd be way early or way late. So we're going to have a couple different times where in smaller groups, all my Patreon members can have a chat and we can talk and we can talk about how to get you paid and promoted this year because that is what we are focused on. So head on over to TrillMBA.com for more info and you can sign up at Patreon.com and the link is in the show notes. So come on, guys. If you love this show, if it's helping you, help me help you. And we will get you more great content if you become a Patreon member. So love you guys. Thanks for the support. And back to the show. We are now going to talk about how to get an outstanding performance appraisal. Now, I know you're like, okay, so you're telling me to do the least and you're telling me to get an outstanding performance appraisal. Felicia, make that make sense. Okay, hear me out. Now, if we go on over to the good book on page 28, Harvey J. Coleman says, so, To earn an outstanding performance appraisal, three elements are included. The plan, your performance, and the actual appraisal. Many people think that their involvement in this process begins and ends with their performance. And that is up to their manager to appraise them. They believe if they perform well, a good appraisal will follow. Ooh, that's dangerous. That is a bad assumption. Do not believe that or assume that, that if you perform well, a good appraisal will follow. Harvey goes on to say, it might, but it is by no means guaranteed. There are, however, some game moves that you can make that would increase the likelihood of your performance appraisal being outstanding. And I'm not going to read all this to you guys. I think you should get this book. There is an affiliate link in the show note. It's not an expensive book. It's worth every penny. So I'm going to highlight some things that he talks about that is key. So the first thing he talks about is your organization may not have like a formal appraisal process in which then you need to create a process for yourself with your manager. You need to document here. And he doesn't explicitly, like, I feel like he doesn't really use the word documentation, but documentation beats conversation every day of the week. You need to document and have your manager aligned to what your plan is for your performance for the year. And then you need to keep this tool and you need to revisit it at least once a month, okay? So this is the plan and you're gonna track against that plan. And then what you wanna do is add one. So you're doing well against the plan and then you wanna do one thing extra and that's it. Don't do any more. Don't do any more than that. And when you do this plan, you should have no more than two really key objectives and then no more than two really big meaty projects 
And then there may be some day-to-day stuff that just is brass tacks that you have to get done. And if you're doing all those things, then you should have outstanding performance. Like just document it. That's why this is only 10%, right? Because you need to control what it is that you are saying you're going to do so that you set that expectation and that expectation is set in writing. So then it doesn't become this very subjective gray thing. It's more objective. It's in writing. This is what we agreed to. And no, you cannot change, you know, in the middle and penalize me. And so that's why you have to keep this update every month because business priorities change. And so you and your manager have to go back and agree, hey, I was working on this project. We're in the middle of it, but now you want me to pivot over here. Let's make sure we're clear about that and what the implications are, right? And just the process of being that on top of it already gives this image of outstandingness because most people don't do this, y'all. Most people just work in day to day. I'm even guilty of it. Like I have a great manager right now. She loves me. I love her. I could be doing better in this department and I'm going to work on it because I want her to have in her mind that I'm performing outstanding, like that she should like rate me high. But I'm going to be honest with you, as a people manager myself, I'm just getting by. I'm doing it. Like (laughs) I'm doing my work. (laughs) I haven't added any extra. It gets done when it gets done kind of a thing, right? To be honest. So I know that, you know, I'm halfway through the year and I'm glad I'm doing this episode because I need to go sit with myself and be like, let me go back and look at my objectives. Let me go schedule this time with my manager to talk through like, hey, I want to be known for having outstanding work. So what does that look like for you? And let's talk about it. And then, you know, once I get her alignment on what outstanding looks like, which and you should document it. And then at the end of the year, that's what you work towards and you're focused and stay focused there. And then at the end of the year, you're like, hey, remember we talked about this? Well, here's my assessment of myself. And the great thing is managers are lazy. (laughs) They're not lazy, lazy. They're just busy, lazy. It's just too much. And so if you have all this neat tie in the bow and you just hand it to them, guess what they're gonna do? They're just going to take it and they're going to read it, especially if they like you and they agree with it. They're just going to take it and they're just going to read it. And then guess what you just did? You just shaped your own narrative just by being organized and having documentation. So did you work hard to do that? No, you did not. You did not work hard. You did not try to do 511 projects and like kill yourself and say yes to every single thing. You documented what the most important and most visible things were, and you stuck to that plan. And then you added one more thing, or you made it to where you added one more thing. And then you said, I over-delivered. Like, just write it out, plan it out, document it. And your boss, if they like you, then there will be no problems and you'll be promoted. But I love what Harvey J. Coleman says about the appraisal. I'm going to read this to you. The appraisal gets us back to the people game. Every appraisal will be delivered by a person who, as an individual, has quirks, hot buttons, pet peeves, hopes, wishes, etc. This person will usually be your manager and is crucial to your career success. If you are not keeping her happy, then all of your efforts will be fruitless. This is so basic that it is always surprising when I discover that so many employees do not get along with their manager. If you happen to fall into this category, it is up to you to fix the problem. Yes, I know that sucks, but that's true. Do not wait for your manager to address the matter, Harvey says. It is not your manager's job to get you to like her. Respond to your manager as if she were the company president. Your mindset should be that you are one of her key employees contributing to the accomplishment of her goals. It is your job to make her look good at all times. The best way to do this is to complete your assigned tasks in a superior manner. Once this is done, if time permits, 
volunteer for additional duties. Again, one, one thing. That's what he's talking about. But I want you to hear this because I know a lot of us are working for Karen and Mike and we hate them. But you know what? They don't need to know we hate them, number one. Number two, we don't need to like them. And then number three, but they need to like us. And if you have a manager right now and it's broken and it can't be fixed, leave. Just leave because you're not going to make it. Okay. It just, if it's so broken, it can't be fixed. Just go. Now, when we get back from the break, I'm going to talk about the most important thing about performance when we get back. Hey guys, guess what? I have a Patreon. Yes, I know. If you are already a Patreon member, you've just been helping us out and you may not have gotten a lot of content over there, but that's all going to change. I promise. Starting in April, we're gearing up to give you a whole buttload of tactical guides and videos and live sessions with me. So if you are grandfathered in, which means you signed up for our Patreon before the end of March, you're going to get all kinds of extra special things because you've been riding with us from the get-go. Now, if you haven't signed up for our Patreon, I suggest you go on over and click that link in the show notes and sign up today. All right, now let's go wrap up the show. Most important thing. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. But real quick, I'm going to read the last paragraph in the performance chapter. And mind you, the name of the chapter is Performance, the entry ticket, right? So Harvey J. Coleman says, The message here is that while performance only counts 10% when evaluating promotional candidates, your performance is a major contributor to your image. Performance shows that you bring worth to the organization. So make no mistake, performance is a critical ingredient in the overall success formula. Outstanding performance is the admission ticket into the stadium where the game will be played. So understand, guys, you have to be deemed as an outstanding performer. However, that does not mean that you have to go kill yourself doing everything. Perception is king. You have to be perceived as an outstanding performer. And in order to do that, you have to manage your narrative. So next week, We're going to talk more about tips, tricks, and tactics on how to do just that. Manage your narrative because it's so very important. But your homework is watch some of this confirmation hearing, like protect your peace at all costs. But you want to watch a little bit of it because it really is a masterclass. Thank you, Judge Brown Jackson, because it reminded me that no matter how hard we work, how much we accomplish, we still gonna come up against this bullshit. And that's okay because we will rise above it, period. So, all right, guys, stay encouraged. Have a wonderful week. If you need some help or advice about a specific situation, go to trillinba.com slash coaching to schedule a 45 minute consultation with me to strategize and walk through your specific work situation. In addition, you can always email me. I love getting your emails. I really appreciate you guys for the questions and the comments and your listener letters. Please send them to me. If you send in a listener letter, you will get a free coaching session. So always understand I'm happy to either answer your question or connect you to the right person if I don't have the answer. Again, that's trillmba.com slash coaching to schedule a 45 minute consult with me or ask at trillmba.com to submit your question or concern or your listener letter. If you submit a listener letter, please put listener letter in the subject line. So I know that it is okay for me to read it on air And I also know that I need to send you a link 
for a free coaching session. So until next time, you guys, we're going to make it. So keep it trill. The Trill NBA Show is a Fair World Corp LLC production. Executive produced by Felicia and Rose Inuha. Sound design and editing by Chris Mann with Pod Shaper. Theme music is Kick Push by Ryan Little. Keep it trill every day, y'all.